Hey guys, welcome to Unleash the Video. Um, we have the usual crew today, and we have a special guest. I'm going to introduce the guest first, because because we're nice, are we? Uh, say hey to Juan. Say hey, Juan. <laughs> hey, everybody. How's it going, guys? So Juan is more popular than... Popularly known as this is guy. not true. <laughs> we're we're all cool gadget tech enthusiasts on this hangout here, and he's based in Los Angeles. That that makes me way cool though. I will say, living the LA life is pretty rad. <laughs> and he's Mexican, <laughs> and I am I am of Hispanic descent. Thank you. Jeez, <laughs> jeez, Michael. I'm, I, and on that note, uh, we have the usual. Say hey, Alvin. Wherever, which side? Which Hi, side everyone. Is. Uh, we have Michael, who is very offensive today. Hey guys, I'm not offensive. I'm just culturally accepting. <laughs> and He's we have just Yash. How he sees it. Hi guys. And Yash is 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 still using a Windows computer. I, I'm using a Windows computer. You got you got to watch that, man. I'm ah, using a Windows. My my Windows, Windows workstation will crush any of your Macs, man. Purpose built. So, Purpose built. So, um, like so comparing in, a big old heavy duty diesel truck and some Fiat or something like that. <laughs> Mac is not a Fiat. It's like it could be like a oh, Prius. It's, it's pretty and it's glued shut. So yeah, it's like a Fiat. <laughs> in mobile news this week, uh, we have a lot of fun stuff to talk about this week. Uh, we have Hula. Am I pronouncing that right? Hula. Uh, Yo, I'm pretty. Yola. I'm pretty sure it's. Yola. I'm pretty sure it's Hala. <laughs> it's not Hala. No, I'm. I'm pretty sure. I, I. I think I read that in a book somewhere. Okay, so Michael has demanded that he gets time to talk about this. So it's the first topic that we're going to talk about. Go, Michael. All right. Um. So, if you don't know who Yola are, they are a group of ex Nokia staff, or mainly ex Nokia staff, that worked on. The Maymay project, so Fremantle on the N900, Harmonton on the N9, N950, and pretty much all the other um, Nokia internet tablets that came before the N900, such as the 770, the N8XO, and all those other crap. Um, so pretty much what they did is at Slush, which is a startup event in Finland, they unveiled their Sailfish OS, which is pretty much what they've been working on for the last year and a half. And it's built on the same core that um, Harmonton was essentially built on. It's built on the Murta core. And if you've been using Migo 1.3 Community Edition, I think it is, which is Mer and Nemo, it's pretty much the same thing with a custom UI. So, talking about the UI, they also announced their Yola UI, which is going on top of Sailfish OS or Sailfish UI. It keeps getting interchanged, so I don't really know which one it is. But it's similar to Hamilton in the sense it has three, scre three screens, all accessible by swiping, except instead of swiping across ways, like horizontally, you swipe vertically. So it's the same thing, you know, you double tap get your unlock screen and just swipe from the bottom up and then you'll have your home screen and then you can swipe up again and you have your app launcher. So the home screen also acts as a multitasking view which is pretty much the same sort of swipe as the M9 so you just swipe from the far edge into sort of like back into the center and the view goes into the home screen, if that makes sense. It's hard to explain without, like, visual aids. Um, <laughs> I can have all my sketches out right now. Um, we need a PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint presentation. Well, okay, this, I want to try and demonstrate using my N9 and my N950, because hopefully this will work. So, hopefully. Okay. So, but while you're demonstrating that, is, is the advantage of doing this sort of like touch whiz or... Sense on an Android would be is it is it it's, is it the same functionality but like different screens to get there? I think TouchWiz is shit. So <laughs> I do think TouchWiz yeah. is shit. I do <laughs> agree. Touch when, when, when you're talking about like basically the same core but a different UI, okay, that's kind of so, what I'm going to think of first. Is okay, so in the se in the sense TouchWiz. that it's the same core is it's <clears throat> so how people say that Android is built on the Linux core. Yeah. So. It's the same sort of thing. So it is. So Migo is Linux based, and the mm -hmm. core has sort of gone from Memo into mm -hmm. Memo Six or Migo, and Hamilton was Nokia's version of Memo Six. 
but okay. there's still that base Mego or Memo core that has been what's it called like distributed in the community under the name Mo Project, and then that mm -hmm. core has now been used by Yola. It okay. sounds like the structure of a desktop Linux distribution where gotcha, you have gotcha, gotcha. Linux underneath everything, and you can put whatever UI you want on top of it. Understood. Understood. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've spent literally tens of minutes with an N9, so they were the best ten minutes of your life, though, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why am I so dark? Oh dear God. Okay. Um, anyway, so, so with that, so so. so so my American sidetracking notwithstanding, are, do you get, are you able to, to show it show it off or at least show what the difference well, is? Well, I, I can show you something similar because obviously the whole UI isn't it's not public like it's public knowledge but it's not publicly available. Oh, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. So, say, let's just go into a random app that I have open. Say you have your app, mm -hmm. and you just swipe across. Instead of seeing the app like the app window drag, it goes completely transparent and you have sort of what they're calling covers and these will go on your home screen. So that would be the main home screen for say official UI. Okay. Now instead of having just static images or in the N9's case that you can actually see the app process working, you can actually drag the um, icon itself to the left or to the right and certain actions will be performed. So if you have the music player you can flick it left and right to um, change the track or flick it. I think it's flick it right to change the track and flick it left to pause. play or pause. Yeah. So it's, it's like the pulley system, like they mentioned, the pulley system UI well, that's, thing. That's the next part I'm getting to. Oh, okay. Just beat me. <laughs> Damn it. So, um, You're stealing you his use, thunder, Clinton. <laughs> I know. Oh, I, should get, I should have had my playbook ready, but it's not charged. So if you've used the playbook, you can drag from the top of any window. Right. Down and you get like a context sensitive. Um, Again, literally tens of minutes with the playbook. <laughs> <laughs> you get a um, context sensitive menu. So right. it's the same sort of thing. So if you're in the gallery, you can drag down and you have share options like Facebook, um, email, MMS, etc. But what they have is this cool thing called ambience. And you select a photo, and the algorithm or whatever it is in the software automatically gets the main color from that photo and creates a theme or as they're calling ambience in the device so you have pretty much your time or whatever is all color coordinated to the main color in that image so it just adds sort of an extra layer of that personal touch to your device and then everyone's device can be unique and adapted to them and all that sort of thing so that's pretty cool cool um, yeah, there's, that's pretty much it that I can think of from the top of my head. All right. Okay. <laughs> so the question <laughs> that is on everyone's mind is, can it be installed on the N9 and run fine on the N9? Yes. And the N950. Oh, ah, okay. Which so, I'm lucky enough to have both. Whose phone is that? Why does that keep happening? <laughs> oh, the cool, the cool funky sound? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's just my WhatsApp. Oh, okay. <laughs> or I should say was probably out of N9. Was out. Um no, it's actually my girlfriend. Oh. Okay. Oh. Alright, let's uh let's move on now, shall we? <laughs> okay, so so Hyola, what I like about Hyola is that the site also has the ambience thing imaging from the uh from the UI. It's yeah. kinda cool. And they don't have a proper they, they have like a gazillion um different logos too, which is cool. I guess. Talking about that before you change, just quickly. Uh, if you do go to yola.com, J-O-L-L-A.com, you see that on the top of their site, there's like a little, like a neon sort of bar at the top. That is going to be present in the entire Sailfish UI to indicate that it is um, either, if you're in the vertical um, home screen, to indicate that you're at the top or the bottom, or that if you're in a menu that there's actually a context-sensitive pulley that you can pull down. And the issue with the different icons is their whole... that you know, um, Yola's not a company, it's a movement, we're open for everyone, yada yada. So it's, if you go to the website and you like the um, the logo that they have, click, the, yeah, there you go, you can see it. Um, let's just change to him, if we can see that. Can everyone see um, one screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you can see that yellow 
um, bar at the top. Yep. yep. That's the uh, pulley indicator on Sailfish. And you just simply swipe that down and you have your context sensitive menu. And the whole issue with the, if you actually click the, um, it's called the logo. Just click it. Oh. Oh, yeah, I do can... like this logo. So I am going to click yes. And then you have to hit send. <laughs> yes. Once you hit yes, you click, click send. So and you then... can vote for their logo? So you vote for their logo. So it's oh, nice. sort of the community having <clears throat> input into how, like, the, um, what the logo should be. So I think there's like six logos all up. Oh, but the cool. website itself is an awesome, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Representation of ambience. Because if you notice, that background was yellow and it had the little yellow, um, like, neon light there to indicate the pulley. And that's pretty much what happens with the, the whole ambience on the Selfish OS. <sighs> it looks really clean. I, I guess. I guess I'm just a little curious as to what, you know, like how, how does it how does it change the functionality of the phone enough to to draw a user or a community base to support it? It's the yep. same that pretty much um, Mamo and Mega has been. It's just the whole openness and the whole open source community sort of band together, help each other out, and it's just mainly for fun and for hacking, like. I remember that the M900 was actually used as the brain in a robot for, I think it was MIT or right. something, some like um, tech unis, um, what's it called, like thesis pro um, project or something like that. So the whole open source idea and pretty much being able to do whatever you want as long as you can imagine it is pretty much what right, drives right. the community. And I think they're doing a couple of things that are pretty smart. One, they are not trying to compete with Microsoft and Apple and Google. They right. are not trying to do something that is on that sort of scale because it's not very feasible at this point, I would say. Um, the second thing that they are really smart about is that they are focusing in terms of products on China because the mobile industry in China is less entrenched than in the Western world and in a lot of um, other developed nations. So there is a greater chance for them to be financially viable there rather than competing in the US. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can well, see that that oriented, like that, um, what's the word I'm looking for, like that um, focus on the Chinese market just by the website, the fact that they have English right. and I think it's Mandarin, yep. like present at pretty much all times. So that does show a lot that they are working heavily for the Chinese market and they even have a um, headquarters set up in Hong Kong now. So that's pretty big stuff. That's right, yeah. But at the same time, so far, what we know of what they've done, we haven't seen any hardware yet. And gotcha. right now, we have only seen how the UI works. And... I don't mean to be cynical, but anyone can do a nice UI. So, you know. Um, <laughs> well, clearly no one can because the Android UIs out there are very, very. No, I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, no, I, I mean, you, you, well, but, but, but I look at I look at something like like Hala over here, and uh, you know, it, it it looks like that 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 to me looks like it could be the under, underpinnings of an N9 version of CyanogenMod. You know what I mean? And, I just don't know the N9 yeah, I mean, enough to know if that's that's how an OS becomes popular with that community of phones. When I watched the, the video of the UI, I thought that it was very clean, and it honestly reminded me of TouchWiz, so, sorry, no, what's that? TouchFlow. Oh, snap. HTC <laughs> Flow. HTC yeah, TouchFlow. Yeah, yeah, TouchFlow 3D. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. On Windows Mobile. It reminds me of that in terms of the fonts and stuff. And But when I said that anyone can make a nice UI, I remember WebOS. And yep. yeah, small company <laughs> trying to compete in the mobile industry and they got swallowed by a big company that killed them. So, um, Damn so I don't know. Damn uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, a, mobile, a, a mobile platform is more than a nice UI. So I'm waiting for more in order to really have an opinion on it. I am reserving 
enthusiasm for when it is really deserved rather than jumping in right now. And because I think that one web OS is enough. We don't need another one. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Michael yeah. in the corner is going like, oh, I'm going to get him for that someday. No, but but yeah, I mean, it is very interesting to see. I hope, I do wish them the best with, with, um, with what they're trying to do. But um, you will, I, if you I if heard you that watch... big butt coming a mile away. <laughs> I wish them the best. <laughs> but, but, but um, like, like Alvin said, um, it's, it's pretty tough out there. If a corporation as huge as Microsoft is spending so much cash trying to get people to realize that there's Windows Phone out there. Um, I don't well, know. But that's, it, it is that's tough. the new game. That's the new game of figuring out who's going to be number three. Yeah. You know, and like, like rib. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I don't. See, that's, see in, in my heart of hearts, because I, I really do like Blackberries, but I don't know that they've got the cash to keep losing fights. Microsoft has shown that if they want to be in a market, they will continue to lose until they're a part of that market. I mean, the Xbox is a perfect example of of losing fights until they're successful. And I think yeah. Windows Phone is now going to get a shot in the arm that it looks just like the desktop, it looks just like their tablets, it looks just like their laptops. And so over this next year, I think they become the strong number three. And while Yola is made up of ex Nokia employees, we need to remember that Palm, um, when they were doing WebOS, when they, they were developing WebOS, they were comprised of really skilled you know, talents from Apple and Google and other people yeah. who were who, who who were hired away from these larger you know organizations in order to help turn Palm around. And for a while there was a lot of optimism and there was a lot of you know hope that they could succeed, but then too many things got in the way, they ran out of money and you know um I I I, well, I, I, I still don't know um what HP was doing. So, <laughs> well, it's HP so... was going through that transition where they wanted to become a software services company, and they were going to axe all of their hardware. And <laughs> Microsoft, and a little <laughs> bit. I mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna out Cisco, and um, I don't know. It, it was a bad move on their part. Um, what, what I think will be curious is, uh, is how, how does RIM survive this changing ecosystem? And then also, it kind of goes back to your point about ecosystem. You know, having a nice, elegant UI yeah. or having a nice, elegant operating system doesn't mean anything unless there's the full support. And while, while, <laughs> while Yola runs Android apps, if it's anything like how the playbook does it, it's probably not okay. worth bothering. Michael, I, think, I, think, I think Michael, I has, Michael, Michael yeah. has something to say. I, I knew this was going to come up, so I was waiting. I didn't want to bring it up because then everyone's going to say, oh, you just want to bring it up because you want to say that Yola's going to be the best and all this stuff. Okay, um... When the N9 first came out, yes, I'm bringing the N9 back up. Um, when the N9 first came out, everyone was like, oh, this company, Myriad, is bringing out Alien Dalvik, and it's going to be the savior because yeah. Android apps are going to work, and there's like 200 and something thousand Android apps. And everyone was so excited. Pretty much what happened there was Nokia said to Myriad, we don't want you, or we don't want some financial support. Like, we don't give you financial support or something. There's some business deal that went wrong there. Now, Yola's gotten into a partnership with Myriad, who are putting their, um, what's it called, um, Alien Dalvik onto the Sailfish OS. So Dalvik is pretty much the virtual machine that runs inside all Android devices and that can pretty much play any of the apps. So it's not like a playbook because you don't have to repackage the apps for Playbook OS or for BB10. It's pretty much, you get the APK and you can play it on your device. But... I, th but then like my, my question would be then, if you wanted to benefit from the Android app ecosystem, why would you do it on a hard, uh, on a piece of hardware and, and, and on an OS that that isn't oh that isn't intended to um, to support these apps because well, well, there are many. Fair, I to, mean, to, if you wanted to. But 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 to kind of piggyback on what Michael is saying there is isn't this what we're talking about? Because we're not talking about you know sort of a matured ecosystem right now. We're just at the WBIC stage, the why because I can um, element. So because the kernel supports or, or the underlying architecture supports running that APK, that helps bolster up the community. It means that you'll eventually be able to kind of create the same kind of store ecosystem that Android and iOS users 
take part in. And you don't have to convince developers to spend a lot of extra effort repackaging their apps for this platform, yeah, right? exactly. And it won't push away users for the fact that they'll say, oh, I'm not going to go try that because it doesn't have the app number that, say, Android, iOS, Windows Phone, right. etc. have. So that sort of brings in potential, what's it called, like potential user, a user base, which also right. then brings in developers because they say, oh, there are users interested in this platform. Even though I have the Android app, it works fine. Maybe I'll use Qt, develop it, because it'll integrate with the system better, it'll have a better interface, etc. And then they'll get into that Qt ecosystem, which is essentially what Sailfish OS is pretty much promoting. It's promoting the whole Qt based ecosystem. So you've got like Symbian, Mego, um, I think Linux, Windows, the actual right. desktop supports Qt. I think VLC is made in Qt, probably one of the uh, most popular examples of a Qt application. So all that sort of stuff, it's not designed as a way to sort of tackle the app issue. It's more of a way to say, okay, if you think apps is a reason why you shouldn't do it, we have an answer for that. Right. All right, guys, well, while uh, we could go on speculating about Yola and we might <laughs> end up talking about <laughs> uh, the whole episode about it, let's so, just uh, right. finish off Yola topic with a few so, so that's for speculation. That one thing was uh, they've already announced in partnership with a Chinese operator a few months ago. And at Slash, uh, they've announced, as far as I remember, a partnership with uh, DNA from Finland. And uh, so they have two operator uh, partnerships for now. They have funding. And uh, they are going to announce the first device in quarter one, 2013. So I guess we can give them time that they are moving ahead. Oh, we get plenty of time. It's 20 minutes now that we've been talking <laughs> yeah. about here. So we but but yeah, on. I mean, so uh, so yeah, I'm adding that to the list of stuff we can't talk about anymore. <laughs> Windows Phone and Yola, because we can go on and on. No, oh, no, Windows Phone is great. We can talk about Windows Phone. Oh, no, 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 there's time. Uh, like, I'll, I'll put you a can, link at the bottom or something. Yeah, yeah you can you can tell us that, and we put the link at the bottom. <laughs> All right. I um, love that. Let's move on. Oh, great. Uh, speaking of Nokia, they released their Here Maps app, Here Maps app, on iOS uh, this week, and it's been um, interesting so far. Some so, people love it. Some people hate it. Some people said, "Hey, so it's better than." It's not a real iOS app. It's the HTML5 mobile site in an iOS right. app wrapper. So, what's interesting though is that it has already shot up to I I think it's the number it's, four. It's number two in India, Indian yeah. app store. It was it was number one until yesterday. It, it is uh, very close to the top most <laughs> popular, <laughs> most downloaded free app right now, and and I think that just shows that. If Google releases their Maps app for iOS, no one is going to use Apple Maps anymore. <laughs> what? It's, it's not even an option, Al, because if you were to see Apple Maps in India, uh, I guess you'd be better off buying a paper map and trying to find your way around it. And, <laughs> and in addition, I, I think that going into the future, I mean, the iPhone fans can say whatever they want. The big players in the mobile location space are Nokia and Google, and it stops there. I don't yeah. think that Apple can will be able to match um, everything that Nokia and Google have managed to do with Maps, even if they have billions of dollars, because this isn't really something that you can throw money at to solve. Um, I think that. If, regardless of what we feel of not just iOS app for here on Maps, it just shows that normal people, people who use iPhones, um, who are not tech enthusiasts, even they are unhappy with Apple Maps. Right. Because if Apple Maps was so great, you know, there wouldn't really be a need or a demand for an alternative. I don't, think we, you, I don't think we even need to uh, go there, Al, because Apple have themselves issued an apology uh, for the Apple Maps, the condition Apple Maps is in. So I don't think any any of the so, Apple fans can argue that they know the maps are good. So um, I think this shows that sometimes 
Apple's whole uh, whole method of operation of making sure that we own everything, we do everything that's on our phone. You know, we are responsible for, for every single service that we provide. Sometimes it doesn't work so well because as a company, you have limited resources, even if you have lots of money. And sometimes collaborations are better than trying to do things yourself. <laughs> Right. That's true. Yeah. Um, it's, well, I it's, definitely. It's, see. Oh no, please, Clinton. I insist. No, no, after you, after you, after you, man. After no, no, please, please. No, I, after I, you, I come on, after I you. Oh, come on, you're the guest. No, well, but because I mean, because this, this, this whole drama unfolded in such a way, you know, like uh, Forstall leaving the company because he refused to sign an apology that it was his fault for Apple Maps. And Apple, in the unenviable position of being a number one with a user base who expects a certain level of polish on their devices. I mean, remember, it wasn't too long ago that Apple was making a big deal out of not turning their customers into beta testers. And now with Siri, Siri and <laughs> Apple Maps, now we're, we're looking at a company who's willing to make compromises on that. You know, this is not the ethic that I think Steve Jobs would have encouraged pos within this company. as well. And, and, and disappointing when you don't see technologies like NFC behind Passport. Honestly, we should not be talking about NFC. It's a, it's a generic wireless radio protocol. We should be talking about a brand name like Passport. Like, we don't talk about tissue. We talk about Kleenex in the United States. You know, it's, it's just yeah. the way that we're, we're trained to sort of deal with our brands and our products and our services. So I, I'm not going to say that Apple can't catch up, but I think they sorely underestimated how much time it takes to build good da mapping data. Because, what, Google's been doing it for the better part of eight years with cars on the ground actually mapping all this stuff out? It's not you know? just about the maps data, uh, Juan, because as Nokia and Google have said that by the time you finish building up a uh, data update and by the time you release it to the market, the actual data in the world has already changed. So it's an right. uh, ever-evolving oh, no, 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 no. process. That, that, that's what I mean is that they, they've been updating that information for the better part of a decade with cars on the ground in real time feeding information. And this is also a problem that Apple's going to find themselves running into more and more often is we start relying on web and search services, which they're historically not very good about providing. So um, they're, they're going to be in a little bit of a pickle because their hardware is going to continuously fall farther and farther behind the increased competition of Microsoft products and Android-based devices throughout the world. And their software solutions aren't any better than their competitors and in many cases are far worse. And while they might have a lot of... Uh customer loyalty right now. Nokia used to be in that position. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, but I also think we've seen how, how much faster a, a top dog can fall. I mean, this isn't the, the time of my grandparents' generations where IBM was this monolithic empire that could never fall. Yeah. You know, I, even I Microsoft just... existed for a long time at number one. I don't know that Apple's going to enjoy that same stretch of time as the most profitable company in the world. And there's yeah. so much competition in the mobile industry that the fact right. that they have stayed, stood still for so long. Look at iOS. I mean, come on. It's uh, <laughs> uh, Oh, no, they totally yeah, updated. People, they have a notification train and everything. go back to the now. iOS 6 episode and... <laughs> and you should see how Al has changed his views in the past few weeks. I mean, this this is what we've been talking about for I mean, the past few months. And so, now, um, Al, so, okay, who so, 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 so because so coming back to you, Maps. I was going to say because I interrupted Clinton and we haven't actually talked about Nokia Maps yet. Has anyone has, has oh, anyone used I, it? I just I just happened to use it for the first time yesterday on a cousin's iPhone four, and um, I'll just say that I was not very impressed except for the maps data uh, the app part of it was not really impressive it was slow and uh, it it's better than what apple maps is but then well, it's no match for windows phone and symbian's nokia map yeah. you can download the map data and and it becomes much faster when you do that um, but nokia had a had a, a press conference here it's, a, it's kind of secretive press conference i should have talked about that damn it but anyway they had a press conference <laughs> and um, and they spoke about hero maps and Ironically, as the press conference was happening, Hero Maps was released on iOS. Uh, so they 
you know, they uh, there there are a lot of nav tech people there, and they talked about how they get their data back and blah blah blah, and you know, this and this and this. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, especially in a country like India, where, for example, Bombay is now called Mumbai, but some people still call it Bombay, <laughs> and every street has like three names. Um, so they're like, you know, it's it's a challenge. Uh, so when we were talking about here maps on iOS, again, they never knew that it was released because it was released right as, as the press conference was going on. Uh, and they were like, oh, you know, um, uh, like this Nokia guy has an iPad and he's like, it's good, terrible <laughs> uh, <laughs> with, with Apple Maps and uh, hopefully here Maps will be able to do it. So, I mean, yeah, it it solves a definite um, problem that was that came about in iOS 6 and actually made that Alvin right over there leave <laughs> the, the iPhone and get a get an Android phone. Yeah. Um, Believe me, Google Maps has got me out of ruts that I've gotten myself into. Yeah. That I would be completely lost if I had an iPhone. It would be useless. So. <laughs> well, I, I just remember when Google Maps first came out and, and all of us that were still rocking like TomTom Tom software would laugh at this. Well, it doesn't even stay on the, the map data. You have to get it off the internet. And oh man, this is useless. And now I don't know <laughs> when the last time I fired up any traditional GPS solution outside of Google Maps or Nokia Maps. Yeah, and Google themselves are also catching up. They're doing a lot of work. At least here in India, they now have navigation, um, which is the nice. only thing that they were lacking. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting 2013, looking at these three I was companies. I was really surprised to see that, that Nokia Maps for iOS was doing as well as it was. I, I really thought that they were going to have a harder time because the map data is really, really good, but I thought they were going to have a harder time with the fact that it doesn't utilize the full resolution of the retina display. Yeah, the maps so, are not retina optimized. So, so I really thought that with you know all of uh, you know sort of the iOS users' penchant for high resolution, pretty applications. Honestly, that, normal users don't care. Exactly. This was the point I was coming to Juan and Al. That uh, at the end of the day, uh, retina displays and the super awesome screens. Always be secondary. Normal users think <laughs> about getting to where they want to go. Exactly. Right. These, <laughs> these, these folks will always be secondary to what we use mobile phones for. Well, yeah. but, but I'll also say, like, I, I know many, many people in the United States who use iPhones because they're pretty. That's it. I mean, really, it's, it, it became a fashion statement, and yeah. they're still on that fashion bandwagon. You know, it's like people who wear yeah, bell same. still. Same here in Delhi. I know a lot of people have the iPhone 5 just because it's an iPhone 5. Yeah, and right. it's, it's you can, you can tell you can tell these people because they will be holding their iPhone 5 while they walk around town. Because nobody else holds their iPhone in their hand. But people who have an iPhone 5 will be holding it in their hand. Oh, but you know what phone I do hold a, hold in my hand a lot just to show off is, is uh, no, this, no, 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 this Lumia 920. I just because no one's ever seen anything like it in the United States. So <laughs> it's not it's a great conversation. Yet. So, oh, it's so yeah. pretty. Oh. <laughs> on a, okay, we need to move on from this. Uh, <laughs> other Nokia news. Um, Damien Dining, the imaging chief of Nokia, is leaving the company. The, re the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because everyone's like, oh, you know, Damien's leaving. Oh, my God, the end is yeah. near. The world is ending. Yeah. There's a whole team that does That's what I want to say as well. <laughs> That's There's what a whole say. team that does peer review. It'll be okay. Trust me. I've spoken to some of the guys who, who came here to launch the, the POV 808, which is still doing very well in India. Um, and there's a whole team, and trust me, guys, it's going to be okay. Exactly. I'm be okay. It's gonna and be you all... know, people are funny. Damien is the one who gets all the media attention, right? But there are loads and loads and loads of people working on this stuff that don't get any media attention. And just because they don't get any media attention, it doesn't mean they don't exist. But so. uh, let, let's not blame people here as well, Al, because uh, it was Damien who started uh, visiting all the uh, discussion forums and the blog posts, and he used to personally resp uh, respond to the user comments. See, so, this, is, this, is a, this is the thing. Um, Nokia needs a face at this point for their divisions. Uh, Damien was the face of Nokia's imaging division. And as Marco, such, everybody... Sorry, it's design. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I thought you were going to keep going. My bad. No, because I was going to say, like, we have, like, that personal connection where you have Damien Dinning as, like, the camera person. You have yeah, Marco right. Sorry as the design guru. Then you and have people... Damien... Damien not just responds to blog posts, but he'll also respond back to tweets which people will throw at him regarding the Nokia ca Nokia's cameras and even the features. But uh, so, as CJ said, that this uh, peer view is not just Damien. There are loads of other guys. Ari Partinen is still there, and 
these are the guys who were behind the 808. So one yeah, person so leaving the team is not really end of the matter. So Nokia is losing a face in such as for, for the imaging division, but maybe they needed to push one of the employees and be like, hey, you, talk about that. What I, what I am glad, though, is that there, there are no longer going to be people sucking up today on Twitter. Well, yes. but, 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 in, <laughs> but in, this, in this new sort of climate where, you know, you know, Ivy is a big player at Apple and Forstall's leaving Apple was a big deal, is, isn't, isn't the, the perception I, of the situation yeah. sort of, Sort of, sort of, not, not, not precarious for Nokia, but just that, that now they, now there's a role that needs to be filled. I think now in continuing the discussion. So in the past, there's been a lot of engagement with users on the part of companies, and so they have these people to to engage with the community and and so on and so forth. If you look at a company like Samsung, you don't know, you don't know any face. Yeah. I mean, um, and 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 as a result. I would argue that they don't really have, say, as dedicated a community as not as Nokia does. Right. Uh, same same thing for Apple. There's a there there have been many public faces, and Apple is very skillful with, you know, creating these public faces for people. So, so such that even if they don't invest in social media at all, right, there are people who still have an emotional connection with the company. So. If you look at um, a lot of companies in the mobile space who don't have, uh, who don't have spokespeople and people who interact with the media a lot, and engage with people on Twitter, there is much less loyalty. There's much less well, that's, dedication. That's, that's, that's what I was going to say. Is, is it's not it's not so much that the cameras get worse because Damien's out. It's that there's a perception of the brand which is marred slightly by not having a face. Yeah, it's that personal connection. With. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I yes. can understand why people would be upset that he's leaving the company because they, the, exactly they this, felt they had made a connection there. This was the first thought because Nokia has been uh, pitching Damien as their imaging lead for the past few years. So when you see that the imaging lead is going to leave the company, there are questions about will they be able to follow up the 920 and the 808 in the future. I'm yeah. sure and, that will. <laughs> And I think well, I mean, I'm sure they will, but but you know what's funny? What's funny is that like I think Apple is a paradox in the way that you know they have no Twitter handle, for example. Right. They right. all of their YouTube co videos have comments turned off. They yeah. I don't think they actually have a proper Facebook page or, or a Facebook page at all. No. They have they have a Facebook page for the iOS store, but that's just to pimp their apps. And it's a paradox, you know. It's a company that has so much loyalty and doesn't give a crap about social media because so, they don't have to. Yeah, because if they don't Nokia have to, they didn't give a crap about social media, would they be here today? I don't think so. Yeah, that is so. True. That is true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, all right, let's move on. <laughs> okay, uh, one-liners. I don't know how we're gonna stick to one-liner about everything here, but let's talk about it. Um, okay. The official photos of the HTC Deluxe was uh, leaked this this week. Um, it's the international version of the Droid DNA. Uh, Juan, I've heard you've had a little play with the Droid DNA. What do you think of it? Is the screen really that great? You know what? I think we're reaching a point where more pixels doesn't really give you a much better experience. Put side by side the Galaxy Note 2, you're really hard pressed to see a clear difference. And that that subtle difference between the two comes at the expense of some serious performance issues. Yeah, battery life especially. <laughs> you know, battery life was okay. It's not great, but just considering that I ran my Galaxy Note 2 playing music for 13 hours today and still had 30% battery life with 3G and syncing turned on, I know I'm not going to get that with the DNA. But I'm talking about other just really obnoxious, like uh, gingerbread-style stuttering moving throughout the UI Pinch to zoom is very poor on the browser. Scrolling in the browser gets really laggy and choppy. And I think that unfortunately comes from the fact that it's just driving more pixels than most phones or most Android devices do. Ouch. Well, I was looking forward to it until now. <laughs> well, you know, th th there's a lot to like about it. Once you fire up an app, a lot of those issues go away. When, when the phone can focus in on, on one task, you're cool. But Android's historically had an issue with its UI where, especially when, when apps are syncing and running in the background, that performance of just scrolling around menus, scrolling around home screens, starts to suffer a little bit because that becomes less of a priority. 
I feel like right now in the Android space, we finally reached a point where there is a balance between performance, screen resolution, and and and, and user experience. I don't and know the, with the Nexus 10 out. I don't know that that's true anymore. <laughs> and and with the yeah with the Nexus 10 and with the <laughs> Droid DNA, I think that they are right. upsetting again. Why? <laughs> well, no, but 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 I was frustrated with the DNA because I you know I, I had I, fewer of these problems on the Infinity, and you're talking about the same screen resolution. It shouldn't matter that yeah. it's a screen resolution in a smaller size. And we should see commiserate performance between Tegra 3. This chipset should be more powerful than Tegra 3. And, but and, that's not really the case when you're when you've got it in your hand. And once again, it's just pushing bigger numbers, better specs. Well, you know. it's it's like the megapixel war, but with our display. And you know. and you know, I guess to some extent that's what sells phones. But at the same time, I feel like reading the reviews and 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 checking out the coverage of of the Droid DNA on these American sites. Um, I don't know what the real benefit of having a 1080p display over a 720p display is because if you say that a display for a display with 342 pixels per inch, you can the pixels are nearly invisible. I don't know whether there is a real benefit to a 440 pixels per inch display that you can actually see, that you can actually appreciate. Um, you know, I, 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 I think it's off. I think it's kind of the same thing when we started seeing 720p screens on like the Galaxy Nexus. Um, I've got a few friends who are photographers. If you've got more resolution to give, they'll take it because when they're showing off their portfolio, they want that detail, they want that image super super crisp, and anything that gives them an edge in that kind of space, they will welcome. So so I I'm not going to say that there's not a a benefit or a need for a 1080p display, but I think we're starting to reach that that point where there's less and less you know it's that diminishing return so yep. there's still there's yeah. still a benefit but for the amount of effort that went into making this device the benefit isn't commiserate with how much was expended and you know what you. in 2013 every single android manufacturer will do a phone with a 1080p display <laughs> yeah, I think I think HTC I think HTC just wanted to be the first because like in yeah. 2012 they were the first to get their quad core phone out there. They they are and the they are the common that says first on yeah. an Android phone. <laughs> <First. laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what's funny though? What's funny is that the the whole of 2013 people are going to be complaining. Hey, but you can't get 1080p screen on Windows phone. Right. <laughs> That's gonna go on and on and on. <laughs> I can tell you. I can tell you right now. But you know what's really that... great is that Windows Phone now supports 720p screens. I don't know. Stop it. Really it. Pretty phone Stop. Guys. But no. CJ, the whole yeah. thing that you're saying about like people commenting that Windows Phone won't support 1080p or doesn't support it yet or whatever, that has all started because of Android. Like Android is pretty much the leader in the whole spec war of having, you know. Right. 16 cores or... I, well, I it's wouldn't got four say cores it's moment, Android's so like, fault. I would say it's the it manufacturer's is, fault. It's Android's <laughs> fault, though, because the thing is, what people understand is it's not necessarily that they the, need quad-core because the, they want to have specs. It's The, the fact openness that, of Android allows manufacturers to build whatever devices they want. And mm -hmm. if chip makers and if display manufacturers put out these displays and these chips, they will use it. <laughs> See, this is why I didn't want to bring up Windows Phone. Damn it! But why did I? Why did I bring it up? Oh. Because Win Windows Phone is a perfect example of it, though. Because Android, yeah, I mean, like, I'm not the sure Android the devices, control in Windows Phone has worked out so well in the past year. Just let me finish, Alvin. Seriously, quad core is like Android is promoting quad core. But if you think about it, the latest version of Android really needs quad core to sort of be snappy and multi. Well, the Android's version of multitask efficiently, whereas if you do have something, say, like Windows Phone, where you only need, well, Windows Phone 7 anyway, you only needed a single core processor, and you could still do tasks like Snappy, you could, everything was fluid. It's not necessarily the specs in that case, it's more the fact that Android needs those higher processing power to perform the same Project task as something else, but people just see higher numbers, they think it's better, not Project the Butter experience was itself. Project Butter was ample proof, Michael, that it was not optimized. See, yeah, that's, that's now, though, it, took, it took to get I'll to Android that. 4. It started out like, how many 
Or 4.1. How many versions before that, though, did they have to actually go through of playing the spec war for them to finally realize, okay, we can keep adding cores to it, and they're still not going to be the perfect experience when the next update comes. We have to do something more. Okay, I could argue for days on this, so we just need to move on. Why did I bring it up? Okay, um, moving on. Samsung made a flip phone, and the reason why I think this is really important is because it's uh, a quad-core processor powering it, and it runs Android. Um, and it's two screens. Yeah, dual screen. Um, oh, one has a picture of it. There you go. <laughs> John, you need and to it's... speak so that it's the, you're on focus. Uh, well, uh, what's interesting though is that it's endorsed by Jackie Chan. There you go, Jackie Chan. So, so yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It, I man, always... you know, I love flip phones. <laughs> <laughs> I like flip phones too. It's just that this thing costs like a gazillion dollars. If they did, um, if they took out the gold and if they took out the Jackie Chan branding, which is some only something that only Samsung could do, um, <laughs> <laughs> then yep. I'll buy one. By the way, I am very very confident that in 2013 we are going to see a Galaxy flip phone. For sure. Oh boy. Yeah. I, I hope it doesn't cost like a thousand, two thousand dollars like this one does though. <laughs> but you know what? So, um, Samsung, Samsung is in this position now where they can experiment with form factors like Nokia used to. Like they can make anything yeah. and people will buy exactly. it. Like I mean, they've been experimenting with names, so now they can probably uh, expand and experiment with <laughs> device form yeah. factors. They could <laughs> make a phone with a circular keypad or wait. Oh, well, but I mean, I, I I will say that they've gotten really good at servicing, like especially like uh, in the United States market, where uh, if you want a nice rugged phone, I just got this guy, which is the Rugby Pro, um, which is a military spec, waterproof, drop proof, shock proof phone. Samsung's kind of leading the way on giving us these types of hardware but options for yeah. the carriers. Wasn't wasn't Motorola the one who uh, led the way last year? Uh, who won? With the D five. The five, yeah, yeah. And now Sony yeah, has the... waterproof models as well. I mean, well, I keep seeing really every like. of these manufacturers come up with uh, one of these uh, rugged phones every now and then. I'm right. just surprised well, that Samsung made a phone that is waterproof and everything. Proof. Right, yeah, especially. Uh, no, um, the the Motorola Defy here in the United States was on T-Mobile. It wasn't very popular. Not very many people picked it up. I liked it. I thought it was a fun phone to play with. But when we use rugged phones over here, they look like like aborted transformers you know they're weird and lumpy and like the Casio have you seen that Casio yeah, phone it yeah. looks hideous oh, well, I remember and the so, Sprint rugged phone from last uh, year and, Sprint and or the Spine, name of the Casio was GZ1 the Gizone oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it sounds like a bad Pizza Hut dish it sounds <laughs> awful <laughs> <laughs> but but so so Samsung coming along and doing this, I think they've actually brought rugged phones to uh, like th they're they're a forefront. Like the the first yeah. Samsung Rugby was actually talked about on the LA local news for their little tech chat. And they yeah, went and called it the Rugby uh, Pro. Yeah, that's that's a whole new. <laughs> let's not get into that naming either. But but yeah, um, so flip phone that runs Android. I, I think it's a good idea. I don't know. It might, no, I might the keep, only reason uh, why I like flip phones yeah, is because when you call me. I can flip it open <laughs> and flip it closed when I'm done like a boss. Hey, like, you like you're on you, the Enterprise. Yeah. I like you it. see those cool Hollywood TV shows, everybody's using a flip phone. Damn, I should try it on a razor. Yeah. No, actually, oh, you're starting to see a lot of a on. lot of Nokia's like Stop this it. Lumia no. 920 <laughs> no. like, on, uh, on Hawaii Five O. I just saw one where they were they were using it for product placement. Yeah, and, and NCIS LA too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the it's black Lumia. I think it's the black Lumia 900. A fair bit. They throw that thing in all the time. I love it. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Next, next story. Next story. Speaking yeah, this of, is speaking speaking of like Windows Phone. Speaking of Windows Phone. Speaking of Windows Phone. Uh, a developer made a homebrew notification center app, um, and it might and it apparently works for Windows Phone 8 and Windows Phone 7 too. So, yes, finally. Oh my God. Stop it, Juan. No. No. <laughs> no, right, talking about the no. notification center. I mean, he used such a uh, simple idea. I mean, just ah. list all the pop-up toast notifications in one place, and you have a notification center to speak of. And it's Microsoft too simple. Didn't and Microsoft get this has done. said that they didn't have the time to do this. I mean, come on. Oh, you got to save something for Windows Phone 8.5. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. I'm sure Microsoft is going to come up with a notification I mean, like, along with API support. Well, it's like Apple one, to iOS, iOS 5 to figure out a notification tray, so... Android uh, had it from version 1. Right. You know, WebOS was was on board right from the very beginning. So I think it's this is it's 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 positive to see developers working in the Windows Phone space regardless. But to actually give us this kind of functionality is kind of huge. Yeah, but it's it's the only thing missing from a Windows Phone uh, and Instagram. <laughs> I've said it so many and times. Tumblr. As soon as Windows Phone, as soon as Windows Phone gets notification center, I will make the switch. But that's well, pretty much been the one thing that for me is like necessary for me to swap because I'm not going to swap from my N9 to something that doesn't <laughs> do what I want. No, or any phone in general. Even if I had a HTC One X or whatever, if you're going to switch or you're going to upgrade a device, you want something that does what your current one does better or that does more to it and it has to have something defining. So for me, I would probably swap to the 920 because it has a bigger screen, a better camera, right. better battery life. That is something that would probably... I'd sort of say would outweigh the fact that there is no notification center. Well, I can understand why Microsoft didn't build one in from its inception because the whole idea of the home screen on Windows Phone is you organize what information you think is relevant and important to you and those tiles update with whatever information is being fed to those apps. Now, if you have other apps that aren't on your home screen though, then those notifications yeah. are lost forever. And it's it doesn't that- scale. If you are a power user and you have a lot of apps and that give you notifications, it doesn't scale because you have to have a lot of tiles, right? There you go, lots and lots of tiles. That's, Who wants that's a exactly home screen say. that that's long? <laughs> that's that, that's the thing why that Microsoft decided let's make it resizable because it's it's true though. Instead of having you know, if I can get back to it, I click the button. Having to scroll through all of those just to get right. to the bottom, I can scroll yeah. maybe half that amount because of being able to put four in the place of one, which is a better solution, but it's still not the best solution. Uh, in you know, you, you my stuff, yeah, but we can talk about this for so long. Yash has left us, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Uh, I think he just wants us to hurry up. Poor Yash. <laughs> <laughs> all, these one, all these one liners taking longer than one line. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's move on. All, right. um, All I'm to... going to do for this next story is LOL. Okay, <laughs> how about that? Okay, so you know how Microsoft is trying to get a lot of people to use the devices. So they managed to get Oprah to use the Microsoft Surface, and she loved it so much that she tweeted about it from her iPad. Trying to well, buy fans, not working so well, right? <laughs> I'm going to say probably what Yash was going to say, because yeah. he this was the one line that he needed the most. Right. You want to talk about he, it so much, but my he point got is, up and left. <laughs> is, it, is it actually Oprah that's tweeting, or is it her PR team? Because it the thing probably, is, we see we PR see team. a lot we see a lot with like I don't know Nokia as an example that they have you know you might see it comes up from TweetDeck or something. Even yeah. though that's a Windows application, it's still available on iOS. So who knows if the person behind that social media account. They might not actually work for Nokia, but are subcontracted yeah. by Nokia, and they might be using iOS. So it's not really that you can say Oprah had tweeted it from her iPad. It's probably one of Oprah's social media teams that tweeted see, it from their iPad. You see, I'm pretty much the, just going to say it was Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, difference, that's the difference between attracting celebrities to promote your products and attracting people like us. Yeah, they should they should throw money at us and we would talk about it. I I have no problems with that, guys. See, Microsoft. <laughs> we don't even need the money, CJ. We can just get given. Just give us the new devices whenever they come out. Launch the freaking Surface in Asia, anywhere in Asia. Just launch but, it. But th- is it, isn't this the, the the one thing that we can say as a positive here is that someone a, a a social figure like Oprah is using mobile tech and that mobile tech has become fashionable and cool. Not yeah, like iPad. geeks, geeks are she. I, I mean, like I'm even going to give it up that like people are using iPads for general computing now. Like I think that is actually sure, yeah. cool. Um, yeah, I have that, I have a friend who's a designer, and he literally he uses his iPad so much. I, I feel bad for introducing him to the iPad because he's 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 addicted <laughs> to it, and he and, he's the only person in my list that uses iMessaging, and it pisses me off because and, he has an iPad right. for <laughs> WhatsApp, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that's always a bummer when they have to use proprietary chat. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, just, I mean, yeah, 
Are we waiting for you? <laughs> are we? Are we? I think we gotta keep going. Let's keep going. going. I, I think we gotta. We don't. Almost we don't want to like let this show lag. We yeah. gotta keep filling yeah. this thing <laughs> with content. All right. Um. So yeah, it's nice that uh, Oprah tweeted about it. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of the surface now that Oprah has tweeted about it. Okay. Move on. Um. Will I am. <laughs> you know what's funny about this story? I'll, I'll tell you after I talk about it. But Will I am wants to transform your iPhone into a 14 megapixel genius phone. Oh, are you and serious, Yash? Came back? Thank you, Yash. I told you, Yash will do it. He just come in right at the What were we talking about? You're talking oh. about Oprah. <laughs> talking about the surface. No, no, uh, we're we're talking about Will I Am now. We moved no, on. Talking about, yeah, you missed it. You missed it. We're, we're, talking, about, we're talking about Oprah <laughs> tweeting about Microsoft Surface from an okay, iPad. Okay, one, so... one line from from Yash. You, yeah. You, so no one, no one's refuting that iPad is the current market leader for tablets. And to see an iconic figure at least appreciating or noticing the next contender is a big enough news. That sounds like something on Big Bang Theory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nobody, nobody tweets about nobody tweets about Galaxy Note 10.1 or Galaxy Note 800 or blah blah blah. But at least some. Unless Samsung pays them, yeah. <laughs> Samsung has paid a couple of people though. Uh, Did you see the Note 10.1 at? With the oh, no, go ahead. Yeah. There. That's an example. <laughs> <sighs> All right, let's talk about Will I Am now, shall we? <laughs> yeah, so let's move on to Will I Am. Will I Am. Now, what's funny about this is that every blog that posted about it used Will I Am's name in the in the headline. So tw <laughs> Twitter was filled with URLs that were Will dot I dot Am. <laughs> it's really funny because because people would be like, oh, what is that link? Oh, wait, oh, it's a wrong. But it's even funnier because he's starting the I dot Am domain. Yeah, yeah, he is. Right. Um, so uh, apparently, this is an accessory that will clip onto your iPhone, and uh, apparently, the it has its own tensor. So the picture is taken on that it will be a full uh, 14 megapixel, um, and it will transform your iPhone into it into a genius phone. Wow! Uh, I nothing much is known about this uh, so far, though, apart from the apart one picture from that gold. <laughs> it looks like the Instagram a... icon, but made into a camera. But it is um, compatible with the iPhone 4, 4S, and 5. And so. I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet that the sensor is really small. There so, you go. That's the picture of it. Probably <laughs> haven't. Yeah. So what happens is that you get 14 megapixels of noise. <laughs> like how you get 12 <laughs> megapixels of noise with this thing. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> Sony. That's not fair. <laughs> I, I do like Sony V1 hardware. One megapixels of no. Oh no! One, we we all like Sony hardware. Trust me, we or, all like Sony you know, hardware. Just eight megapixels no, of no, no noise. Stop. And no optic image stabilization. No noise. Man, are we bashing image stabilization? Because <laughs> I like to join in. Um, oh no! Do not talk about Sony and their phones. Okay, <laughs> next one. All right. Yeah, adding that to the list. I'm adding that to the list of stuff. So, so, but but with with this device, because they're saying it's compatible across all of these, are are we assuming that they're using some kind of lightning or dock connector on this thing? It kind of looks like they are. It would I'm have to, sure. right? Okay, like, look, it's compatible with the and... iPhone 5. If you plug in the lightning to the 30 pin dock connector adapter, it'll be huge, yeah. Um, there'll, be two, there'll be variants, obviously. There'll be like the iPhone 4, 4S variant, and there'll be the iPhone right. 5 variant. But why are we giving so much attention to this? Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> you're right, you're right. There was a one liner. I'm sorry, yeah. I shouldn't have asked um, the question. And, and uh, the first BlackBerry 10 phone was caught in the wild. It looks Yay. like a BlackBerry phone. Uh, Michael, you can talk about this because I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> um, yeah, well, CJ, click on once post. There you go. It's uh... yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the BlackBerry 10. It's that's one of them. That's going to be part of the L series, or what's leaked anyway to be the L series, which is just full candy bar. Uh, it's like a candy bar, um, all touch. And there's the N series, which is going to have QWERTY touch hybrid, and N series. From yeah, from what yeah. I've been, from what I've heard anyway, and what's been leaked previously. That's it's so much... funny to see it beside, like, is that some sort of bowl? <laughs> right. Yeah. I think that's a ninety-seven ninety. Yeah. I think. Oh. All right. It looks a lot like a Motorola. Like the hardware looks very similar to like the the uh, Droid Bionic. the Atrix. Yeah. Um, on AT and T. Yeah. So so there you go. My BlackBerry's making a phone. That's what it looks like. Uh, <laughs> it has a huge flat very logo on the front. Should we talk about apps of the week or should we skip it? We are 50 minutes over the uh, so far. That's yeah, true. Yeah. 
Skip? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're skipping apps and games of the week. Sorry, guys. Oh. We, we're still, we still include them in the, uh, in the list. Um, all right, I think we should have this week. Scott, who is supposed to be online right now but isn't, uh, he unboxed the Lumia 920. He is the this guy is that a lot of us. The first time I've heard Lumia 920 on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Juan has a Lumia 920. What do you think of the Lumia 920 so far, Juan? I love it. I, 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 I am very much enjoying this phone. This is the phone that I was most excited to be trying out in 2012. And it, it's definitely living up to my expectations. More than the uh, iPhone 5? Part, uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 I caught two different people at the same time. What was that, Michael? I said more so than the iPhone 5. Oh, yeah, no. Not even, <laughs> not, not even close, dude. It's a completely different league of device. Now, yeah, apart better, from... Of course. Apart from Juan being an audio guy, he's also a camera guy. Now, this guy, when I first met him, um, he had, like, three different lenses in his bag, and he had this cool little movable lens thing lens that everybody... A lens yeah. baby. And I just looked at him, and I was like, I want to be him when I grow up. <laughs> but, I'm yeah. a pretty cool dude. So I keep what telling do you, people. So what do you think of the camera on the Lumia 920? Because, see, uh, so far... So far, I thought that it was a little soft. I, I've noticed a lot of that, that there is a big a problem mixed. with 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 when you have uh, bright exposures. There is something that is happening in how the JPEGs are created, and I can't figure out if it's from the optical image stabilization or in the JPEG finishing software. But you'll focus and you'll see that image get razor sharp on the screen, and then the second you take the picture. It's like a filter comes over, which just sort of softens all of the detail, and, and I can't tell mm -hmm. what's happening there. So I, I would very much expect that to be addressed in, in a future update because the low light photography on this thing is, it, it's a beast. I mean, I'm pulling off better shots in dark environments on this camera without the flash than I am on Samsung cameras with the flash. So it, it's pretty remarkable how how big a step this has been for phone cameras. Yeah. yeah, and um, it's launching in Singapore this week, Alvin? Yeah, and I'll be at the launch event on Tuesday and get drunk. <laughs> As you should. I think you've earned it. <laughs> I, love that, I love that Alvin is going to be the first of all of us to like, actually play around with the phone and Scott. And, <laughs> and Did you forget, CJ, I was there on Tuesday? Oh, you were there, but did, do you have a review in it? Because everyone's getting review in it this week. And, well, no, no. Sorry, okay. I got to play with no, it. No, no, Juan, no. <laughs> no. no. But I, I, should be, I should be getting my 820 on Tuesday, though. There's no mention of these new Lumias in India. I mean, we are the forgotten company. How can a company which is losing its cash and market ignore a market no, no. as lucrative <laughs> as India? Look, Singapore is saturated with iPhone users. So well, I, I, I really, really do want to it. regain some share. Yeah, I really <laughs> do think a big part of its fear is that they're, they're hoping to crack the American market. That's where they're focusing their resources. And unfortunately for a company like Nokia, which no longer has unlimited resources, it, that, that focus on North America is coming at the expense of their established markets. You know, um, if you have to pick, do we go after our fans or do we try and make new fans? Uh, right now, you try and make new fans. It's a bummer, but I, I get problem, it. The problem, Juan, is that this time, after losing the fans for the past two years, Nokia is actually having people waiting for the 920, right. and there's yeah, no you, mention of the timeline. I'll tell, you why, I'll tell you why people in India are pissed at Nokia right now. Because um, Diwali happened last week, and Diwali is like the Indian version of Christmas. Um, right, right. No matter what religion you are, you are Diwali is when everybody goes crazy and there's firecrackers and sales everywhere and every manufacturer is pushing their devices uh, with discounts and free stuff and blah, blah, blah. And Nokia just had the same Lumia. Uh, what what Nokia did device. was... The only cool thing about... The only Windows 7 thing related thing was this <laughs> contest that McDonald's had where you can win an Asha phone <laughs> or a Lumia 7. And, and I was like, wow. <laughs> Uh, there you go. That was the best you can get right now. You guys need to come over here to the United States, man. They're just giving 920s out for free to guys like me. And they're like, hey, just take it. And I was like, okay. Ah, all right. That's, That's pretty sweet. <laughs> so so there you go. That's the Lumi 920. Meanwhile, um, um, over here in Singapore, no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> Snap. Uh, uh, let's talk about Sony again. <laughs> so... This week we reviewed the Sony Xperia SL. It's exactly the same as the Xperia S, but it's faster. 
that's literally that's literally my review of it. Look, it it looks just like that, but it's faster. Has Sony uh, totally lost the plot? I mean, I, I just I like their hardware, but they haven't done anything exciting with their last like two generations. Everybody, of phones. everybody likes their hardware. Everybody, but everyone's like, you know, if I want to get a Sony phone, I don't know how long it'll be before I get the update to the latest right, version of yeah, Android, yeah. and and yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's just and if you buy their flagship and they're gonna release a faster version in like three months from next March. <laughs> oh jeez, I don't know what they're doing anymore. Um we also reviewed the Sony Xperia J, which is their budget Android phone. Um Al- Alvin and I actually did <laughs> No, stop it. Ah. Uh, we did a combined Maddie review makes and, a fantastic and... maraca. <laughs> It's like it's a package where they just dump the phones in and you just like open it and it falls yeah. In. Um, I wasn't impressed with it at all. Um, I couldn't use it. Um, although I tried. But if you are looking for a phone in this price range, there are much better options. Just what, like what, if you are considering the SL, there are much better options as well. What is what is the price range on the J? Uh, it's uh, like, it's combining the dollars right there. <laughs> it's below four hundred Singapore dollars. Uh, CJ? Sorry. 18,000 rupees. About 18,000 oh. rupees, yeah. Oh, yeah. How, does that, how does that compare to, like, say, like a Premiere, like a Galaxy S3 get a, type device? A Galaxy S3 would be double that price. Not double, so, less than uh, double, but for 18 grand, you can get a Galaxy Nexus or you can get a Lumia 800. Right. In India. Okay. Yeah, so. Wait, let me, let me, let me ask Google. Okay, wait for it, wait for it. What is 18,000 rupees in dollars? That works. Three hundred twenty dollars. Oh, I wow. I found a use for Google now. Wow. There you go. Three hundred and twenty dollars. Um, yeah. So like so for three hundred and fifty American dollars, you can get the sixteen gigabyte Nexus Four. That's true. Wow. <laughs> That's so okay. not a great it's buy. It's far too expensive. I, I don't think it's fair comparing the Nexus Four price for anywhere in the world <laughs> because you'll blow every other half phone to pieces. I'm that, just saying, that's if I hear one dollar amount and I hear another dollar amount, I should be able to compare those two dollar amounts and say <laughs> that state. No, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. Nexus Four won't cost that less in India or in other uh, markets when it launches here. When it launches here, the Nexus okay, Four will be right. six, seven, eight hundred Singapore dollars. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's our review of the Xperia SL and the Xperia J. Alvin also did a very, very nice editorial. Um, of why, why the concept of life in the cloud is detached from reality, which is uh, actually. <laughs> oh, are you going to give us a live? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. This is going to be fun. Singapore 3G is. Fun. Oh, it's actually kind of fast today. Nope. <laughs> Look at it. Oh boy. Well, we're just getting 4G networks up and gr- up and running in the United States, and so because not not a lot of people are using them, like on AT and T and Sprint. Uh, you can usually pull down between 20 and 30 megabit connections. Well, so, I so cannot believe that, that you guys in the US are complaining about HSPA plus. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what we can get. <laughs> I mean, who could think at that speed? Okay, so that gonna... says... <laughs> By comparison, this is India, and we, we actually aren't that bad. I thought it was... Oh, look at that. Oh, that's not too bad at all. Good. How the... <laughs> I don't think I get 4G uh, in our apartment here, but I can try it. Well, I have 0.5 Mbps up and 0.5 Mbps down. So, <laughs> I, you know, I used to complain about the internet in India and 3G in in Delhi, but not after Singapore, man. The, the one day that I was there has has <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so yeah, that's a really good editorial. Steve Litchfield from All About Symbian, thanks for linking to uh, uh, the. Uh, Obviously agreed with us, um, and yep. you should. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. You guys should go read that article because it's really good. And but now that Yash is on the phone, I think it's time to end. I think it's time to end because <laughs> because because we we're filming at a later than usual time where I've skipped lunch. Yash has skipped lunch, and as you can see, the poor guy. If he skips any more lunches, he's gonna vanish. <laughs> he's gonna waste away. <laughs> and it's 1.30 in the stalling. morning LA time, so it's I'm about ready to go to bed. All right, so thanks for joining us, Juan. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks and, for having um, me, guys. 
Yeah, and uh, this is the usual crew. Everyone say bye. Bye, bye, bye guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and uh, we leave whatever important information you need and chapter <laughs> links in the YouTube thing below. And uh, yeah, that's about it.